Now, insider threat obviously has been a big topic for in the cybersecurity community for many, many years, right? And mm -hmm. many people recognize that that's probably one of the top, if not the top risk. So, but what motivates uh, you and your colleague to uh, focus on this area of research? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So when we've um, interacted with a lot of organizations, uh, this thing keeps coming up where they are concerned about flight risk employees, individuals that are getting ready to leave right. their employment. Okay. But these employees need to have access to data to do their you know day-to-day -day jobs. So organizations are concerned about these particular types of users, these flight risks, taking data with them when they leave their employment. So once these uh, you know these topics, these points keep coming up and up and up, we started you know digging down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. to see, okay, how can we find these in a reasonable way without having to spend hundreds of man right. hours sifting through alerts. So that's what initiated the motivation. That's the motivation for this research. Right, so 58,000 uh, uh, potential, well, on levers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what were your findings? What percentage yeah. of them were taking corporate data with them? Yeah, so when we, when we looked at these users, we saw 15% of them use personal apps to move data, but 2% these 2% mishandled corporate data before they left. So they were um, taking data that was violating corporate policy. So blatantly violating the policy the organization had in place before they left their employment, right? And we saw that a lot of this data movement actually happens 50 days, it starts to happen 50 right. days before they left, much earlier than the typical, you know, two week or four week notice that's given by individuals before they leave. In fact, we saw in our research that so we, uh, we introduced this 15% to show that you know, a larger cohort of users mm -hmm. move data to their personal applications before they leave as well. And we saw um, this particular trends we were looking at, we saw that 60% of the files they move were spreadsheets, images, and portable documents, right? And 82% of this data is moved to Google Drive and Gmail. Right. So this is the type of trends we see when individuals get ready to leave in this 15% that move um, per data to personal cloud applications. Yeah, and in, in, to be completely honest, we still haven't yet to realize what the reason for that is. Why the Google Drive and Gmail? When I said it's accessible, that was purely from um, you know, the incidents we've brief reviewed with customers, with organizations, right? but we still don't know the underlying reason. For organizations that have outright blocked Google Drive because these are the insights mm -hmm. we've seen. We uh, actually, these organizations come back to us and more often than not, they say, hey, like, this is impacting productivity. We can't collaborate with other mm -hmm. organizations. We need to go back and you know, fix right. this. The way we recommend approaching this is by looking at three key signals. The first is volume. Mm -hmm. So identifying whether the data that's being moved is anomalous for that user and that organization. Mm -hmm. The second is the nature of the data. So applying data labeling, things like DLP policies come into play here to identify whether the data is being moved is sensitive. And then the last one is direction. You need to be aware of whether this cloud application is one managed by the corporation, by the organization, or is it outside of the uh, outside of the corporation's mm -hmm. management? And this is where like instance awareness comes in, mm -hmm. or we talked about looking at the the domain that's being used to log in. Right? Is it Gmail, Yahoo, iCloud? Mm -hmm. In which case, it's personal and not corporate managed. You want to identify these. So these three these three key signals are mm -hmm. very important. So what are the